Hey guys, what's going on? It's Aiden. Um, I wanted to do a little update, and now that things are definitely a lot better than they were, I'm going to show you how things are looking. So give me one second, I'll take my shirt off, which I know excites all of you so much. Ooh. Okay. Here we go. Hey everybody. So here's what my chest is looking like. Definite increase in bruising. It's crazy. Like, I don't feel in as much pain as I look like I'm in. This is what I find interesting. I had a lot of extra tissue on this side, so he did some lipo right here. This hurts like fucking hell. Let me see if I can turn it and get you guys to see it better. That's where I'm, I'm kind of sore here. But I'm also numb everywhere that I have bruising. So it's like a mix of good and bad. Um, I'm really happy with the results. I'm noticing more and more how great it looks. Um, if you look at my sides, like, more and more I'm getting straight. straight. And this is still with a lot of swelling. Because um, my surgery was only a couple days ago. If you look, I've got a bald patch right here. Because I was ripping hairs out of my stomach wearing my compression vest. So the doctor was kind of just like, shave it off and it'll grow back. So I purposely didn't want to shave my whole stomach because I'm that kind of guy. So I shaved a patch. Right here. <laughs> um, while I have you guys on here, I want to do a little bit of an update because it is almost November. Which means that I'm almost a year on testosterone, which is crazy shit. Um, which means I'll have to do my one year on T video soon. Which unfortunately won't have that many videos. Voice analysis is on it because of how busy I've been um, with everything. First, before I do everything else, I'm going to show you the nipples. Nipple reduction looks great. Way more masculine. Very happy with that. Yeah, yet again, this is the only thing I'm not happy with in the center. Um, if you look at my whole chest, that's like the only thing that doesn't look right. And it messes everything else up. So we'll deal with that when the time comes. But until then, I'm really happy with how things are looking. I feel a lot more comfortable in myself. Self-esteem is really up. I'm going to try to make videos now that I'm healthy enough to do so. Um, what I wanted to say was that while I have the opportunity to discuss this with you guys, I want to talk a little bit about the suicides and everything that's been going on um, in our community. Because as you know, even though I'm a transgender, I'm not gay, I'm not a lesbian, I do interact with people who are, and I'm still like a human being, and I feel horrible for people who are sad enough in their own lives to attempt suicide, and let alone succeed in suicide. Um, there's that campaign going around called the It Gets Better campaign, which I'm all for. Um, there's been a little controversy over it, but I'm all for it. Um, so here's my opportunity to tell you a little bit about my past while I have about another minute or two before I have to jump in the shower. Um, as most of you guys know, if you take a look down a little more, um, I have a few videos on suicide and drug abuse. Um, when I first came out, I attempted suicide a huge amount of times. Uh, it's a little bit ridiculous, and every time seemed to either not work or I'd get caught. Um, we get caught in the process or caught afterwards and someone would help me through it. Sorry, I'm breathing really heavy because it's a hard thing to discuss. Um, when you're, you're living in either a body that you're not comfortable in or in a world you're not comfortable in because people make you feel uncomfortable, you often seem to have a problem that you, you create in your own mind that you're not, something's wrong with you. And that's why you, you, that's one of the reasons, not all the reasons, but one of the reasons that happened to have been mine, that you feel like you don't belong here and you try to take your own life. And that's a horrible thing. And I'll let you know that even though I'm a believer and people are going to hate me for this, but I'll explain it as much as I can, that if, if you want to kill yourself, as much as it sucks, no one can take that feeling away from you. No matter how much therapy you go through, no one's going to change that in your own mind. That's your own job. And if you do decide, as much as I hope you don't, that that is the way you're going, the path you're going to take, people need to realize that, that was your decision. And understand it. Because 
you know, people give people guilt about committing suicide. That, you know, how could you do that to your family? Things like that. You know very well in your own mind, I knew in my mind when I went through it, that you're not doing it to hurt your family. You're doing it to get out of your own pain. And people making you feel bad because you did it to hurt your family or you actually hurt, you know, yeah, you're going to hurt your family. You're going to hurt the people you love, who love you. That comes with a lot of things, not just suicide. Things you do in your daily life can cause that as well. So, you know, as someone who went through it, that's not the way to guilt someone out of it. Um, another thing is that um, it does always get better. And that's, you know, true in a sense that, you know, your life will go on. And there are other opportunities. As long as you take the opportunity, you're likely to go further in life and you're likely to succeed more and possibly cause more happiness in your life. Succeed, I don't mean wealth. Succeed, I mean in life. To, to become a better person, to become a happier person, to actually find the will to live. Um, again, that all depends on who you are and what kind of person you are. It comes with the territory. In my situation... I transitioned and that's what helped me realize how comfortable I was with who I was and become more comfortable with who I was and with that I transitioned and I became happy and now I'm happy. I went through a lot of situations that didn't make me happy and they made me want to kill myself but that's a whole different time ago. That's like four years in the past and like I used to cut myself and I'm going on, this was my third year without cutting or suicide attempt, so that's not four years ago, it's three years ago. This January will be three years without cutting, suicide, or drugs. It's a pretty awesome thing. And, you know, three years is not a long time. It's an easy thing to get back into. But I don't even want to. There's not one pull. You know, every once in a while, I'm not going to lie. There is every once in a while, there's a pull to cut myself. Because when, when I was cutting myself, I used that as a way to get out of pain. So now when I feel pain, part of me goes, eh, let's do it. I don't do that anymore. So it becomes a difficult thing for me to look at and not want to do it, but I stay away from it. And you have to learn how to do that. It doesn't come, you know, in a week. For me, it came in a little over a year, but it came eventually. And you have to realize that it does come eventually. That's a great way to look at things because, yeah, it's it's like when, you, you know, I hate people always like, you know, you have to climb the mountain kind of thing. You don't realize, you know, it's so difficult but you don't realize once you're standing at the top of that mountain how really awesome that view is. I didn't realize. And I was further from the bottom of the mountain. I was like 10,000 feet from the bottom of the mountain. So I had the 10,000 feet and then the bottom and then the climb and I still made it. There's a, a chance for everyone to make it. I'm not saying it will be easy because it wasn't. And you know what? I, I tell my family it was easy because it makes them think I'm less likely to fall back into it. And I'm not going to fall back into it. But it wasn't easy at all. And you know what? Because of how not easy it was, I'm not going back there. Because I don't want to have to fight it again. <laughs> um, all I'm saying here is that if you ever want to talk out there, really simply email me, Facebook me, YouTube me. I can talk to you. And I will tell you the honest truth about what I went through. I'm not going to discuss every single thing I did on this video because that would waste a hell long of a time and I've got less than a minute left to make this video and I thought it was going to be a four-minute video. Now it's a nine-minute video. But it was worth it because all of you need to know that there's someone that you can talk to and if not, you need to find someone in your life who you can talk to. For me, it was my best friend at the time. It just it helps you get through things. And you have that one person you can turn to, and even if they're critical of you and it makes you feel like shit, they're going to push you through. So just look at life that way. There's always someone that you can turn to, and even if I know it feels like you can't, because they'll probably go tell your parent or something. If you trust in them enough and you explain to them the cru how crucial the situation is, they're less likely to go tell on you and more likely to try to help you without using someone else. If you explain to them that you want help, but that you're not going to trust them if they go to someone else. That person is very likely to help you. And help you on their own and keep it private. Which is the way that you want to handle this. Okay. On that note, i got about 10 seconds left. So I'm going to say goodbye before it decides to shut me off. If you ever need to talk, email me, Facebook me, YouTube me. Goodbye all. Peace.